Hello, welcome back again to Engineering Semester Channel. Today let's start the another interesting topics of the WebRTC tutorial series. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. Today let us see interactive connectivity establishment, IC, and how it will be used in WebRTC peer-to-peer -peer connection. Let us get started. We already discussed that, in order to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection, the peers must be able to route packets to each other. But it is very difficult to achieve it due to the numerous layers of firewalls and NAT devices. Consider both peers are located on the same internal network, and there are no firewalls or NATs between them. In this case, to establish the connection, each peer can simply ask its operating system for IP address. Once the operating system provided IP and port details, we can generate the SDP offer with these details and forward it to the other peer. Once the SDP exchange is complete, both peers can initiate a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection. Now let us consider both peers are in distinct private network. What would happen in this case? The peers cannot get the details and the peer-to-peer -peer connections would obviously fail. Then how can solve this issue? Thankfully, the WebRTC framework will help us to solve this issue. We already know that RTC peer connection is the core part of the WebRTC connection. So this RTC object contains an ICE agent. ICE agent is responsible for getting local IP and port. This is called candidates in WebRTC. It is responsible for performing connectivity checks between peers. Also, ICE agent is responsible for sending connection key to lives. Next, let us see how ICE agent works in peer-to-peer -peer connection. We already discussed in the last video about local and remote description. I hope you are remembering now. Once a session description is set, local ICE agent automatically start the process of discovering all the possible local candidate IP and port. First it asks the operating system for the public IP address. If this is fails, then the ICE agent asks to stun and turn server for the IP address. If those server has configured, in WebRTC there is a callback which is called on ICE candidate. ICE automatically registers the IP details in this callback with the RTC peer connection object. Also once the ICE gathering is complete, the same callback is fired to notify the application too. Here you can see the piece of code which is used for configuring Google's public stun server and the callback. You should remember one important thing. These IP port and stun lookup gathering will be happen as a background process. Once it complete all the process, the details are registered with the RTC peer connection object. Finally, when the ICE process complete, we can create SDP offer and send to the remote peer through our signaling server. Also, one more important point you should understand here. These same process will be happen in the remote peer side also. They have also a ICE agent which will collect public IP of the remote peer. Other peer must acknowledge with a successful stun response. After all the process completion, then we have a routing path for a peer-to-peer -peer connection. If all candidates fail, then either the RTC peer connection is failed or the server to establish the connection is failed. This is the overall process of ICE agent. That's it for now. I hope you have understood the basic idea about ICE protocol and its importance in the WebRTC connection. Let us see more in the upcoming videos. If you are thinking this is informative, then like and share subscribe. Also support us. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.